Greetings, welcome to the Prime Directive. I'm your host, Jeffico. My co-host as always, Chris. Say hi, Chris. Hello. So, Star Trek Disco, episode seven. What'd you think? Um, oh, this one was okay. Yeah. But yeah, let's get into it. I could just put like a clip and we just reuse it every time Burnham was talking. Okay, this time, and this is something I mentioned before, is they actually said personal log though. Yeah. They weren't just having the person monologue at the audience. They were, it was actually personal log saying some shit, which is a format we're used to, and I, I appreciated that a little bit. Did you notice how they were saying that it was uh, future tech? that the Red Angel was wearing. Yeah, we've just like, decided that. Yeah, it, it couldn't have been alien tech or anything. It, just, it had to be from the future. Yeah, well, I mean, we we do know about the, the tachyons yeah. and the other stuff, so I guess it's a fairly reasonable thing. But just the, what they stated in the show was just like, based on what Saru saw, it's definitely from the future. He's got an eye for it, <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> You know, if you ever need a wingman, Saru's the guy. Yeah, I guess. He's got an eye for fashion there. Yeah. Even the fashion that doesn't exist yet. Yeah. Uh, Burnham goes to Vulcan, mm -hmm. and uh, Pike hangs around Kaminar, because, you know, some tachyon shit's going on. Yeah, yeah. Like, as soon as Burnham leaves, they just edge the discovery a bit too close. Yeah. It's like, ah, everything's gone to shit. We should take a shuttle in and get closer, and then need rescue. Yeah, the shuttle, which is not damaged in the same way as the discovery for some reason yeah but whatever it's fine it's uh it's pike's advanced piloting skills mm -hmm. you know, he used to be a test pilot yeah yeah uh him and uh tyler are really you know Hitting rolling, off. rolling out yeah not quite <laughs> yeah, not, not in the beginning but by the end yeah yeah or maybe they've got a Bashir and O'Brien thing going where they hate each other at the start, but then they're buddies. I like when uh, they're sitting in the shuttle and Pike looks behind and is just like, oh, I just saw myself shooting you, but I'm not going to say yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> let's file that away yeah. over here. <laughs> it will come up later. We can talk about it then. Yeah, we'll, we'll burn that bridge when we come to it. Yeah. This is Commander Michael Burnham. Well, uh, what do you think of uh, Burnham's little story arc in this one? Um, yeah, she went. She went and got Spock. She went back to Vulcan. Um, I guess she just figured Amanda was had something up. Yeah, had, had secrets. Was uh, mm -hmm. harboring uh, a, a Spock? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, it didn't really work for me. The whole like drama between Sarah, Amanda, and Michael. I was like. Like, I know she's got some valid points, your husband's emotionless, and blah, 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 even though he was showing a bit of emotion there. And I appreciate that. You know, we know Vulcans do have emotions, and every once in a while we get to see it crack a little bit. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, so with regards to, you know, his children, you know, that that's fair enough. And Spock, uh, you know, he's brilliant, according to Burnham. Yeah. So to solve the problem, we just reverse what he wrote. <laughs> <laughs> he, has, he has Vulcan space dyslexia. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, that was uh, that was an interesting set of coordinates. Mm -hmm. Talus four. Uh huh. And I, I guess we'll just bring this up now because uh, we we've said where we're going. And to me, when I when I said this episode was meh, th this sort of felt like just a bridge between the fun stuff we did at Kaminar the previous episode and the fun stuff we're gonna do at Talos four the next episode. Like, this episode just felt like a vehicle from getting to the previous one to the next one, and I, I, I wasn't feeling that, you know, this episode was considered particularly important. Yeah. As the wife of the Vulcan ambassador, I have the legal authority to invoke diplomatic immunity in order to shield my son from extradition. Unless the ambassador objects. Yeah, I, I was looking at the timelines, uh, so, the cage takes place like three years before. Yes, that. yeah. So, General Order 7 is in effect and she should not be allowed to go to that planet. Under penalty of death. Yeah. So, don't take that lightly. I mean, I guess, um, yeah, this is half the reason we got Pike on board is so he can get upset about this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I hope they meet back up because yeah. if they go to Talos Ford without Pike, I'm going to be disappointed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We could get some like really cool flashback shit there um, because like 
yeah, like I get it. He was there in the pilot, and then he gets horribly burned. Mm -hmm. um, and then they're just like, oh, we're going to take him back there because yeah. they can do this thing. Like, it'd be really cool if they added story to why Pike might want to go back there. Mm -hmm. Not just the girl. Yeah, not just like, out of the blue. Yeah. Like, maybe he's I got remember some more this blonde girl. You're a captain, possibly for 10 years. Yeah. Kirk met a lot of girls. <laughs> Ten why years, yeah, why this one? Why this one? Yeah. No, and if they can like find an actress just to play her, that'd be cool too. Mm -hmm. That'd be a nice little, nice little callback. I would actually like be watching this going like, yay! Hey. <laughs> but there was no non in this episode, so I was like, no. Um, That's two episodes in a row. They've been actually rotating it for me, being like, here's some non, no non, here's some non. Come on. Yeah. Well, maybe you'll just get extra non next time. Hopefully. If not, we can go to the Indian restaurant. Yeah, we can. Hey. So we got to go to the Section 31 ship. Mm-hmm. And Section 31 finally seems to be doing things that are a little evil. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I know Leland's evil, but like... Just well, the he's, way... he's bros with Pike. Yeah. Yeah. Um, George is just like telling him, like, oh, like, I know your secret. You, uh, you killed Michael's parents. Yeah, and I'm wondering if that's um, him personally, like you caused that, or if like Section 31, like you caused that. Like I get, if you're working with her, you don't want her to find out, but like you're on a secret ship that can disguise itself as an asteroid. When you're done with her, it really doesn't matter if she finds out. Like, yeah. <laughs> you are Maybe undercover, not. like yeah. beyond. All your superiors probably already know about that, yeah. so it really gives a crap. George's just doing her little power play to take control, which mm -hmm. I don't even see how this information helps her take control unless she gets him killed. Yeah. I really liked how fast Michael just punched her <laughs> when they yeah. said... You must decide. Said, yeah, I'll, I'll give you, you 10 seconds. Yeah, come <laughs> I know so much more about you than you can imagine, but that's for another time. Right now, you're going to attack me, then rescue Spock, which is good for you. And that will make Leland look bad, which is good for me. Yeah, it looks like she's still looking out for a little friend there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Leland didn't want her hanging around, so he's just like, hey, why don't you hang up at the Starbase? Mm -hmm. We're gonna extract his brain. Yeah, yeah. There we go. We're we're yeah. getting some sketchy Section Thirty One that we know. And they might have literally uh, taken his brain out. You never know. Oh, it's they, they wouldn't do that. No, 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 no. You're right. That will happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, was it Tyler? Uh, they get they get probed by their own probe. Mm hmm. It was a squiddy from the Matrix. Yeah, it was from the Matrix. Yeah. Um, and so, then it was. Just, 500 years in the future. So they, who, they, who the hell is modifying their probe it. to send it back? Who diddles with another man's probe to send it back to probe that man? Yeah. I tell you. That's whack. Um, I get... Uh, are wanna, they doing the temporal cold war again? They're, they're saying Literally it, Literally the man. worst part they're, of Enterprise. Is that it. what they're doing? They're like, oh, the Red Angel and whoever, like, altered this probe could be the same people or they could be people in the future that are warring. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Like, some sort of temporal war? You know, you knocked me, but I say the Enterprise did a great job on that. Uh, we can stretch under things. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they were fine. The Suliban were fine. Yeah. Just the whole temporal Cold War thing was kind of... Uh, yeah. You tell me you didn't like the uh, Nazi Earth? No, I did not. I've seen Nazi Earth a couple times, and that was one too many. Yeah, alien Nazi Earth, though. Come on. Yeah, yeah. If it wasn't for you, that thing would have sliced me in two. Just instinct. No, it's more than that. And I am grateful. I don't get Tyler's point of view of why he's always at Pike, but uh, they're bromancing it now. Stamets apparently isn't affected by temporal... Uh, Anything. I thought that was really weird because he's just looking at a screen and he's just like, I have tardigrade DNA, so I'm not affected yeah. by this screen. It's I can, the same I can, image. I can beam over and touch the controls of which I guess Pike and Tyler couldn't do anymore. I guess. Well, they were saying that like he's not going to be confused by the layer, time layers or yeah. whatever that were overlapping, all the ghosts. Data wasn't confused. Yeah, that's true. It was, it was him. Which one of us is the right one? I think it's me, the one in the middle. <laughs> yes, the middle. It's one. always the one in the middle. Yeah, it was good times with uh, Tyler and Pike there, but um, mm -hmm. at the end, when uh, they decide to self-destruct the shuttle, they're like, "Let's go to warp," because this big thing's gonna send this like time tsunami at us. 
Well, what about the planet that's right yeah? That there? was that was a big explosion. Yeah, <laughs> they did not in address the direction that. of the planet. Yeah, they did not address that at all. I guess, um, so they what what information did they get? Yeah, I feel they, like, like they... we're missing on so many of these Discovery episodes, just like the brief recap scene at the end, like Captain's Log. Yeah. Here's how what happened and how it all turned out. Well, it's, it's cause Burnham just, you know, she wants to start the episode out telling you what's going on yeah. rather than the finish. Um, um, Arium got hacked. Arium got hacked. She got three dots. Yeah. Um, so she is compromised mm -hmm. and she will probably kill someone. Maybe, maybe. I, I hope it's a seductive kill. I hope it's like Arium. <laughs> this is a. It'll be Reese on the bridge who actually found Pike. Uh -huh. It's just like Arium. This is kind of out of the blue, but and who actually got lines? Like yeah. fair amount of lines. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, it's gonna be like, yeah, it's kind of out of the blue, Arium. Uh, this is this. Is, oh my God, she's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> I found something. Residual traces of three deuterium plasma burns. I think it's the captain. Why burn off valuable fuel if you were being pulled into a rift? It's an old trick they taught us in flight school to alert search parties. No. Oh, no. I um, need the information from your brain. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what ability she has. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it seems pretty clear at this point that this is all going to connect back to the, uh, uh, to the Calypso short trek. Is it, though? Because that says, like, 33rd, like, century... So that would be like 800 years. Mm -hmm. So we're in a 23rd or not. I guess that'd be no, so the, the math, 1000. Yeah, the math doesn't out because they're saying it's 500 years in the future. Yeah. This probe change. Well, still, we're dealing with, with time travel here. <sighs> yeah, and like, I'm, I'm sorry, pretty but confident that this is Star going. Trek time travel. This isn't some timey wimey like Dark mm -hmm. Who crap where mm -hmm. anything could happen. They gave us a precise time and we have to believe it. <laughs> well, that's just where the probe came from. You know, it could be. We outsource our probes to the past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now it'd be nice if there was a little connection there. I have a feeling that there this this season is going to end with like explaining Calypso and why the ship was there. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I don't know. <laughs> Overall, uh, final thoughts. Yeah, final thoughts. This episode felt kind of hollow to me. I mean, I know we finally got the, the Spock carrot. Like, that's off the stick. Uh, but he didn't really do anything besides mumble. He's so not the Spock, you remember. Oh, God. I was like, I was like, is Amanda talking to Michael or to me, the audience, and yeah. just being like, temper your expectations? That's what Pike did first episode. Oh, uh, God. Um, but yeah, the, the, it felt sort of hollow to me. Um, like like I said, this was just sort of an excuse to get us from Kaminar to Talos IV. And I, I think they were just wrapping up, you know, getting Spock on board, like getting some more info dumps for Section 31. The whole... Uh, B story with the uh, the time rift just eh, it was okay it, just, it, it was just there there was just some issue to take up time something for them to do it really was yeah and I just I didn't feel that uh, Burnham's story was all that necessary like yeah she's got a fine spot but like I don't know everything she did in this episode just didn't feel all that necessary mm -hmm. and then like everything Disco did really became unnecessary when they just left the system. Yeah. Yeah, what happened to Kaminar? Yeah. Are they okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well, you know, you just, you saved the Kelpians, but you just killed them too. <laughs> yeah, so prime directive violations kind of don't, yeah, didn't matter. If it happens in space and not directly on the planet, you're mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, overall, um, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing Talos IV and uh, yeah, out of um, the redesigns of the yeah, Talos. Yeah, you know, maybe giving yeah, giving some context to why Pike might want to go back. Yeah, yeah, I'd really like to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as always, thanks for watching. Things of lives. Show me my brother's mind.